What's up? Welcome to the stack. Welcome back. If you've been here before, I'm Neon Mushroom, also known as Shroom, also known as Adrian, also known as M.T. Jesus, like one guy calls me that. We have some CDH gameplay for you guys today. There's a caveat with it, but before I can get to the normal explanation stuff, quick selfless, selfless, selfish, self-promotion. Um, we are doing a giveaway for mats. Um, anyone who wants all the information, there's a card on the screen somewhere. In the description, there will also be a link to this video. We announced a giveaway. Um, it doesn't. It's not getting very much traction for obvious reasons. You guys want to see gameplay? I also just want to see gameplay. I don't go willingly clicking on random thumbnails that don't interest me. But we do want to spread a bit of awareness because we want to make sure as many people know about it as possible. So check that video out. A little caveat, this giveaway does end not this Friday, which is today, the day the video comes out, but a week from today. So keep that in mind as well. That's the last day you can actually enter the giveaway. One of the big things is you enter the giveaway for free. You can do it by doing all of the things that we tell you to do in that video. There's descriptions in the, there's directions in the description as well. But also if you buy one of our sweet play mats, we've got three arts. I have no clue if I'm gonna throw a mock-up in or not in the B-roll. But um, if you buy one of those, you can enter the giveaway twice. And that's all thanks to your play mat, our play mat partnership sponsor thingy for the channel. So keep that in mind. Now that that's out of the way, we can talk about the game today because we're kind of playing CEDH. Uh, most of our lists are fairly tuned to be uh, able to hold their own in a game of CEDH, but we're still dipping our feet when it comes to like getting good at the format and understanding all of the things that go into actually going in to play a game of EDH with the intent to play it as CEDH. So keep that in mind. And uh, we did mess up the opening hands a little bit. Um, I did my best to guess, but there was a camera issue when we actually did the opening hands, which means that some of the cards might not be completely accurate. I have no clue. I think I did a pretty good job. I had to go through the game and uh, like kind of see how the game went and made, make some guesstimations, but that's never come up before. Hopefully it never ever comes up again because that was very annoying in the editing process. Anyway caveats out of the way. That's all you guys should need to know. Let's go ahead and take a look at who's playing, what decks they've decided to play, and what opening hands they've decided to keep, as well as, say it with me, our normal upkeep stuff. As always, if you like this show or any of our other shows on YouTube, liking, sharing, and subscribing helps us out immensely. If you like our content and don't mind that extra mile, you can always support us over on Patreon, over at patreon.com backslash mtgthestack, Patron shout out, funny man gone this time again. I know this is the second video I've released personally where I just did normally did the shout out, but this one, I don't wanna, Ethan, I don't know how much information you want me to share about what you've done, but you just became a patron and you sent a very nice message to us. So I wanted to just send you a personal message that wasn't in text back. Thank you, we really appreciate you. Um, you're awesome. You did enter uh, to be a patron just before the deadline for the patron only giveaway. So you're in, just so you know. That's all. That's our patron shout out. Let's get back to the, 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 the no, there's going to be a glitch and then we're going to go back to Calvin's voice. Comment down below any of your thoughts and feelings and we hope you enjoy the show. All right. First up, we've got Aiden playing a fairly typical Godo Bandit Warlord combo list. For anyone who's not familiar with how this list works, it wants to count to 11 mana using rocks, rituals, and cost reducers. And once it achieves this, it can use six of the 11 mana to cast Godo, the other five to equip it with Helm of the Host, and it allows him to go into combat, making infinite Godos, and he gets to keep swinging until all of his opponents are dead. He's lucky enough to keep a seven card hand with two basic mountains, a buried rune, Panharmonicon, Ruby Medallion, a Palladium Mirror, and the infamous Wheel of Fortune. Next up, we have Guy Scott playing yet another mono red combo deck. In this case, he's playing Magda Brazen Outlaw. This deck's game plan is to utilize Magda's activated ability in conjunction with treasures in order to go tutor up some type of an artifact to create a game state where he's able to win. Some examples are Cloudstone Curio when paired with Dockside Extortionist and Karn the Great Creator with Mycosynth Lattice. He's also lucky enough to keep a seven card hand with three snow covered mountains, a scavenger grounds, a dwarven miner, Karn the Great Creator, and a deflecting swat. Next up, there's me, and I'll be playing my Yuriko the Tiger Shadow list. This is going to be a list that's able to pivot between different game plans, depending on what the game demands. The main one obviously being the tried and true Yuriko Burn strategy, in addition to the A plus B combo of Thassa's Oracle and Demonic Consultation, and Doomsday Piles. Lucky beats good because I was able to keep a hand of 7, and a fantastic one at that, with Flooded Strand, Underground River, Ornithopter, Fourth Bridge Prowler, Chrome Mox, Deadly Rollick, and a Commit to Memory. Last but not least, we have Calvin playing his take on Mad Farm. In this case, he's using the partner pairing of Dargo the Shipwrecker and Timna the Weaver. He's using Timna to farm cards in order to gain access to all of his combo pieces, and he'll eventually want to start looping Dargo, much like you would with the Gravecrawler and a Phyrexian Altar, in order to use something like Zulaport Cutthroat to kill all of his opponents. 
Calvin unfortunately was unlucky and had to ship down to six cards, keeping City of Brass, Phyrexian Tower, Windswept Heath, Necropotence, Ranger Captain of Eos, Corpse Knight, and he had to put a Grape Shot on the bottom of his deck. All right, card game, tiggity tiggity time. Cap can have that one here. That's probably the one that wins anyway. Because one, two, three, flip. It's Iden. <laughs> it's Iden. <laughs> nice. All right, Iden's first, so he's going to start by drawing a card for turn, and he'll play a snow covered mountain as his line for turn. It doesn't matter in this particular deck, so I'll just be referencing them as mountains. We'll move to Guy's turn, and he'll play an actual snow-covered mountain because it matters in his list. And I'll just pass to me, where I'll play Flooded Strand, and then I'll drop an Ornithopter. But nothing else, I'll just pass the turn back to Calvin, where he'll draw, and then Calvin's going to drop a City of Brass as his land for turn. He'll tap it, losing a life, and he's going to play a Gorilla Shaman. After that, he'll pass the turn back to Aiden. Leading off the second turn cycle, Aiden's going to draw his card for turn, and then he's going to play a Buried Ruin as his land for turn. After that, he's going to proceed to tap out, and he'll cast a Ruby Medallion, passing the turn right back to Guy. Guy's going to draw his card for turn, and he's going to play a second Snow-Covered Mountain as his land for turn. Then I'll tap out for his commander, Magda Brazen Outlaw, and I'll just pass to me. So I'll draw. In my first main phase, I'm going to go ahead and drop Underground River as my land for turn. Then I'm going to drop a Chrome Mox, imprinting a Commit to Memory underneath it, so it taps for blue. After that, I decide I need to fetch, so I'm going to crack my Flooded Strand, dropping to 39, and I'll search my library for a Watery Grave, paying 2 life for it to come into play untapped. Then I'll tap Watery Grave for a black mana, and I'll play 4th Bridge Prawler. When it enters, I try to give Magda minus 1 minus 1, Guy has a response. He casts Deflecting Swat and forces me to target the Gorilla Shaman. Unfortunately for me, this works, so the Gorilla Shaman will die, and then I'm going to head into combat and attack Aiden for 0 with my Ornithopter, but I'm playing Yuriko, so obviously I tap 2, losing 1 to the river, and Ninjutsu in Yuriko. He takes 1 commander damage, that triggers my commander, and Yuriko reveals a fierce guardianship, bolting each of my opponents. I'll add the guardianship to my hand, redeploy my Ornithopter, and with nothing else, I'll just pass the turn back to Calvin. Calvin untaps, draws for turn, and then he's going to play a Phyrexian Tower as his land for turn. After that, he's going to tap out, losing one to a City of Brass, and he's going to play a Zulaport Cutthroat. With no further actions, he just passes the turn right back to Aiden, who starts the third cycle of turns by drawing, and then dropping a basic mountain as his land for turn. Then he's going to tap for two, and he wants to cast Wheel of Fortune for one less because of his Ruby Medallion, and I do have a response. I'm going to for free Deadly Roll at Guy's Commander, and then we will all end up wheeling. We discard our hands, and we each draw a fresh seven. After that, he's going to bend the Wheel of Fortune, and I'll tap for one red in order to cast Tormenting Voice. He'll discard one of his mountains, and this will let him draw two fresh cards. After that, he decides he's done, so he passes the turn right back to Guy, who untaps and draws his card for turn. Then Guy's going to play a third Snow-Covered Mountain as his land for turn. He's going to tap for one and play a Pyrate Spell Bomb. That resolves, so he's going to tap for one more, and then he's going to play a Liberated Dwarf. But nothing else, Guy's just going to pass the turn back to me, so I'll untap, and I'll draw my card for turn. I'll lead off on a Polluted Delta as my land for turn, then I'm going to head straight into combat. I'm going to turn all of my creatures sideways at Aiden because he's open. He declares no blocks, so I have an action. I'm going to tap for blue, and I'm going to Ninjutsu in, Misblade Shinobi in place of my 4th Bridge Prowler. This is going to have him taking a total of 2 damage, and it's going to trigger Yuriko twice. I'll reveal a Sunken Runes, and a Phantasmal Image. Each of my opponents will take 2, and I'll add those to my hand. After that, I'm going to tap for 1 black, and to Calvin's dismay, I'll redeploy the 4th Bridge Prowler, killing Zulaport Cutthroat. This triggers the Cutthroat, so Calvin gains one, and we all take one. After that, I'm going to crack my Polluted Delta, dropping down to 34 life, and I'll search my library for a basic island and put it into play. Then, we're going to tap for two, losing one, and I'll cast Demonic Tutor. I'll search my library for a Doomsday. I'll add that to my hand, I'll shuffle up, and with nothing else, I'll just pass the turn right back to Calvin. Calvin will untap, draw his card for turn, and he's going to play a Cavern of Souls, naming Cleric. Then, he's going to tap for 2, and he's going to lose a life to the City of Brass to play Dockside Extortionist, which is going to net him 4 treasure tokens. He'll put those treasures into play, but immediately sacrifice 1 and tap his Cavern in order to play Leonin Relic Warder. When it enters the battlefield, he's going to decide to exile my Chrome Mox, and then after that, he wants to sacrifice one more treasure, this time for White, and he's going to cast Weathered Wayfarer. With nothing else, he's going to rearrange his board and pass to Aiden, who draws for turn. Aiden's going to play an Inventor's Fair as his land for turn, then he's going to tap for 3, and he's going to cast Palladium Muir. After this point, he's going to pass the turn right back to Guy. Guy's going to untap and draw his card for turn, and in this first main phase, he's going to play a fourth Snow-Covered Mountain. Then suspiciously, he's just going to pass the turn right back to me, so I'll draw my card for turn and play Sunken Ruins. 
Now I can't help but notice that there's a Dockside Extortionist in play, so I want to tap for 2 to cast Phantasmal Image, but Guy has a response, and a pretty good one. He's going to use that Pyrate Spell Bomb to destroy Calvin's Dockside before my image enters. So that goes to the bin, then image will enter the battlefield, and to Guy's dismay, it's a copy of 4th Bridge Prowler, killing his only creature. This means when I go to combat, he's wide open, so I'll attack him for 3, and he takes all 3, leaving me with 2 Yuriko triggers. That's going to reveal a Lotus Petal, and a Mana Confluence, so all of my opponents take 0. I see an opening here, so I play Lotus Petal, and then I'm going to sacrifice it immediately for black, and tap my other 2 lands for black as well, to cast Doomsday. That's going to have me putting my library and my deck together, and I'll search for 5 cards, and half my life total. What's going to happen here is I'm going to get this pile. Gush, Street Wraith, Gitaxian Probe, Force of Will, and Thassa's Oracle. In order, Gush is on top, Oracle is on bottom. I'll explain this pile at the end of the game for anyone who does not understand what's happening here. After that, I'll just pass the turn back to Calvin. Calvin will draw his card for turn, and then play a basic Plains as his land for turn. After that, he's going to tap for 3 mana, and he wants to cast his commander, Timna the Weaver. Now that his farmer's in play, he wants to head into combat. He's going to attack Guy with his Weathered Wayfarer, and I'll attack Aiden with his Leonin Relic Warder. Neither of them block, so Calvin is going to have them each taking damage. In his second main phase, Calvin will take two, and then he's going to draw two cards thanks to his Timna. After that point, he's going to sacrifice one of his treasures, and he's going to use it to cast Cabal Therapy targeting me. Now, I don't want this Cabal Therapy to hit me, so I'm going to cast Misdirection by pitching a Muddle the Mixture to it. I'm going to have him target Guy instead, and since he has to target Guy, he names Cloudstone Curio. He searches Guy's hand, there's no Cloudstone, so he puts the Cabal Therapy in the bin, but then he's going to sacrifice his Weather Wayfarer to recast the Cabal Therapy targeting me. He asks to see my Exile Pile, I show it to him, and he figures out pretty quickly that he's supposed to name Force of Negation, he checks my hand, and it's there. So I discard my Force of Negation, Calvin's going to bin the Cabal Therapy, and Calvin has no further action, so we pass the turn to Aiden. Aiden gains a life to his Inventor's Fair because he can't count, but Calvin can, so he loses the life, and then he's going to draw his card for turn. Then I'll drop another basic mountain as his land for turn, and he's going to count out and tap a total of 2 mana in order to cast Seething Song for it to reduce cost thanks to the Ruby Medallion. That's going to have him adding 5 red to his mana pool, and he's going to bend the Seething Song. Then he wants to use 3 mana in order to cast Iron Crag Feet. This is going to allow him to add 7 red to his mana pool, and he can only cast one more spell this turn. Many of you probably already noticed what's happening. He's going to use 6 of that mana, actually 5 because of the Ruby Medallion, in order to cast Goto Bandit Warlord, which triggers, he searches his library for a Helm of the Host, it comes into play, then he can use the rest of that mana to put that Helm of the Host on the Goto. I'll explain after the game exactly how this win works for anyone who doesn't know. But that does in fact leave Aiden as the winner of today's game. Goto got today's game. Um, I honestly didn't see it coming. Maybe I should have. I haven't played against Goto that much. But I didn't realize how quickly he'd be able to go from like 0 to 60 on his fifth turn. I probably should have seen it coming, but I was kind of forced to make a play on my end. Let's talk about how the game went in no real particular order. Just one that makes sense to me. And I want to start off with the players who maybe impacted the game the least, I would say. It's kind of hard to measure that because everyone played a kind of important role in this game. I want to start with Guy. Because Guy's playing a Magda deck that still needs some tuning, if I'm being honest. But what the deck wants to do, like I said at the beginning of the video, is it wants to leverage Magda's activated abilities in order to throw together some type of a combo. And while it's doing that, it's a mono-red deck, so it can be somewhat disruptive. It has trouble in certain areas like card advantage. But um, it's a pretty sweet deck, and I cannot wait to dive into it a little bit more because I know that he likes it and he wants to tune it up a bit. So expect to see it more both on our normal gameplay videos and on our live streams. But that game, on his fourth turn, on top of, you know, his Magda being just murdered every turn. But, uh, like, I tried to murder it once with the fourth bridge. Then when it didn't work, I killed it with the Deadly Rollick right before the wheel. It was a bad time for Guy. Now, there wasn't much he could do about it. But he did hold up four mana when he passed on his fourth turn, which unfortunately was his last turn. Um, but for anyone who doesn't know, he was holding up a red elemental blast. Um, you should know that because it was shown when Calvin cast the uh, Cabal Therapy on Guy. Well, when it was misdirectioned to Guy. But there was a, uh, a, py a Pyroblast or a Red Elemental Blast. One of those two cards. Which uh, could do a pretty good job of stopping me from killing. Um, we'll talk about how I would prevent that in a moment. But that's why he left his mana up. He also left it up so he could do the Pyrate Spell Bomb, which stopped me from copying the Dockside. If I was able to copy the Dockside, there was a chance I could have tried to win right, win right then and there. So um, he played an important role that didn't quite get there. We had Calvin, who had a really slow start. When I say slow, I just mean he didn't play fast mana. 
But he uh, he kind of, on turn three, his deck just exploded a little bit. That's kind of what Dockside does. And um, he was able to play the control role in the very late end of the game, because I doomsdayed and passed. Normally in these Yuriko builds, you want to doomsday before combat, and then execute the whole doomsday pile. But I wasn't able to do that this game, and I thought that we were approaching the end game very quickly, so I wanted to take the time while I had the Lotus Petal to just doomsday. That may have been a huge mistake on my end. Again, we're dipping, we're getting our ears wet. Our ears are still wet. We don't want to get them wet. We're dipping our toes. But that's kind of how Calvin's game plan went. He didn't do a whole lot, but he did a ton. Like, he didn't do anything to end the game, but his deck kind of did start to spin its wheels very quickly. Had that game been dragged out a little bit longer, there was just a good chance Calvin started to combo us with his Dargo. He's also tuning that deck, so look forward to seeing more of the Mad Farm deck from Calvin. Then we'll talk about me, because I did not win the game, but I was probably the closest to winning. If I untapped, there was a solid chance I was going to win. I did not factor for the uh, Cabal Therapy, unfortunately, because I was holding the Force of Negation. Um, I got my Force of Negation taken out. My deck did its game plan turn after turn. Um, it was very quick, but I realized that because of the speed of the game, I wasn't going to be able to execute the burn plan the way that I wanted to be able to. So I went for the Thassa's Oracle Doomsday plan and uh, how the how the pile works for Doomsday. Because I know some of you, most of you, especially if you clicked on this and you play CDH, you're probably aware that this is a, a type of pile you can expect from Doomsday in the colors blue and black. But what I was trying to do here was I put the Gush on top and the Thoracle at the bottom, and I had two islands. So on my next turn, I don't make my land drop intentionally, and I cast Gush, bouncing two islands to my hand, tapping the two mana in the meantime. And that allows me to draw into my Street Wraith and my Gitaxian Probe. Then I get Probe Calvin, because I know that guy has a Pyroblast slash Red Elemental Blast thanks to the Cabal Therapy. And um, I find out if he's got the protection. It turns out after the game that he did, and um, I likely would have been shut down very quickly. But um, then the Gitaxian Probe draws me into, I've got the Street Wraith and Gitaxian Probe. So then the Git Probe draws me into the Force of Will, the Street Wraith draws me into the um, into the Thassa's Oracle. I haven't spent any mana in the meantime, so now I'm able to just try to Thoracle and win the game. Um, there's certain piles that involve Cavernous Souls, I just have not updated my deck with Cavernous Souls quite yet. That was our game plan. It failed because Aiden did the thing where he just counted to 11 by turn five and everyone, I was exhausting my resources to try to go off and the other player was red and then Calvin was just very fearful of what I was doing. He was also on the mold of six. So he had like a few, le one less resource in the beginning of the game, unfortunately. So Aiden was, he was able to just go off and um, I could have tried to stop him. I would have countered his iron crag feet with the force of negation, but Calvin did get to see my hand and I didn't want to force it because that would cause him to pitch two resources resources and I didn't want to do that so that's kind of how the game went Aiden did fantastic he just counted to 11 killed us there were a few ways we could have played the game a little bit differently and we will continue to play CEDH expect to see a little bit more of it we're not going to become a CEDH channel but we do want to we enjoy high powered magic all four of us at least the core group Aiden me Calvin Guy play 60 card format 75 card formats um, at, you know at a fairly competitive level so we really enjoy what CEDH brings to the table that said, I've been rambling about this game for how long now? Like five minutes, so I should probably close the video so everyone can get on with their Fridays. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. It doesn't look like any of us can win. So counter you, you could potentially. I could potentially.